Having built our recurrence relation for merge sort, we now need to analyze it. We're going to analyze it doing exactly what we've done before. So we're going to label this first equation as a star or some other signifier. We need to off to the side, do some plugging in. So in a different color, we're going to plug whatever's inside of T on the right hand side and over two into star. And now we have T of N over two on the left hand side is equal to two C times N over two plus two T of N over two over two. Maybe do a bit of simplification. We get T of N over two is equal to CN plus two T of N divided by two divided by two is N divided by four. We then replace T of N over two with the expression there. Let's highlight it to signify exactly what we're doing. So this purple expression over here is going to replace the T of N over two in that equation. The reason I do that is that we need to be careful of that two that has appeared in the problem. So T of N is equal to two CN plus two times the stuff highlighted in purple, which is CN plus two T of N over four. We distribute the two and we get T of N is equal to two CN plus two CN plus four T of N over four. We then need to do the exact same thing, but with N over four. So we're going to plug N over four back into the equation. Let us do that in red. So plug n over 4 into star. Doing so, we get t of n over 4 is equal to 2c times n over 4 plus 2 t of n over 4 over 2. We then maybe do a bit of simplification, just as we did before. It's t of n over 4 equals... 2CN over 4, also known as CN over 2. So let's do that simplification in place. Plus 2T of N over 4 over 2, which is N over 8. We then replace the N over 4 that is in the original expression with the right-hand side of whatever we just developed and see what happens. So we make that replacement and we get T of n is equal to 2cn plus 2cn plus 4 times quantity cn over 2 plus 2t of n over 8. Copying from the stuff I highlighted in right on the... Copying from the stuff I highlighted in red on the side. Let's distribute the 4 and see what happens. We get t of n is equal to 2cn plus 2cn plus 4cn over 2, which is also 2cn, that's convenient. 4 times 2, that's 8, t of n over 8. We then need to try to identify a pattern in what is occurring here. The first original equation we call k equals 1. The second equation we call k equals 2. And the third equation we call k equals 3. If you stare at this for long enough, you might be able to develop our pattern for any value of k. So for any value of k, we get t of n is equal to, in general, this is a summation, which is why I actually didn't combine any terms, even though you might have said, well, why didn't you? And the summation is going to start at i equals 0, typically, unless we're doing something sort of clever. So we go from i equals 0 to something of every single term looks like 2cn. That's kind of convenient. There's no pattern to identify. They're just the same. And there's, there were k terms. I had three terms when k was 3. I had two terms when k was 2 and one term when k was 1. So this goes from 0 to k minus 1, because that will make there be k terms in that summation. Plus, the t term looks like 2 to a power times t of n divided by that same power of 2. So that's 2 to the k t of n divided by 2 to the k. And if we look at this, it checks out. k equals 3 gives us 8, k equals 2, two gives us 4, and k equals 1 gives us 2. We then need to choose k to satisfy the base case, so off to the side in orange, we're going to do that. We're going to choose k such that the base case is satisfied. The n divided by 2 to the k should equal the base case, which if we look up here was 1. We solve this for k and get n equals 2 to the k, and then get k equals log base 2 of n by taking a log base two of both sides. And now we just need to plug that in and simplify. So we plug in K and get 
t of n is equal to, that summation simplifies to k times 2cn plus 2 to the k, which is 2 to the log base 2 of n, and then t of n divided by 2 to the k, which I set specifically equal to 1. And now, t of 1 is just c1. We have 2 to the log base 2 of n, which is just n. And then this first term, we can just plug in k over there, and we get t of n is equal to 2cn times k, which is log base 2 of n, plus n times c1, which is c1n. And if we look at this, hopefully you can go, yeah, I can easily see that that is in n log n, because that dominates n. So thus, my final conclusion is that t of n is in theta of n log n. Which is really good, because that is a runtime that is just barely above n. This is actually a fantastic running time. We saw selection sort as one of our first examples, and that was in theta of n squared. n log n is comically better than n squared. Think about this n, if n is 10 to the 10, that is 10 digits, 10, log base 10 of 10 to the 10 is 10. Those aren't even remotely comparable. Log, in some sense, measures the number of digits in a, a number. It is much, much, much better than n. So this is a fantastic runtime for a sorting algorithm. In fact, you can prove that you can't do better than this in the worst case, actually. So n log n is a fantastic running time, and that is the running time of merge sort. 